This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back here with the one and only Marco Permunian, Italian attorney. How are you doing today, Marco? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. And today in this episode, we wanted to go over uh, some of the questions that you guys have been asking that you've left in comments and go for more of a Q&A video because it's been a while since we've done a Q&A session. So let's just jump straight into this. So the first question that we want to go over is kind of a more generalized question about if a person owns property in Italy and they don't have Italian citizenship, What right do they have to be able to stay in the property as well as does owning property in Italy help them? This is a topic we've touched on before, but I think uh, since it's been a while, it's going to be great if we can just kind of have a a little review on this topic. Thank you, Raphael. As we said before, owning a property in Italy doesn't automatically qualify you for a visa. It does help the obtainment of a visa, uh, a specific visa, but it doesn't entitle you automatically to a visa. So if you purchase a property in Italy, you have to be sure to understand that if you don't obtain a visa, you will be able to enjoy your property only for vacations, which means that, um, you know, we talked about this, you can only stay in Italy uh, for up to 90 days. without a visa so for for vacation and then you have to uh, exit the schengen area because actually i should have said you can only stay in the schengen area for 90 days including italy and then you have to exit the schengen area for 90 more days and then you're able to re-enter for 90 more days and of course this applies to the people who um, are members of countries uh, which participate in the uh, let's call it Italian visa waiver program. So if you're an American, an Australian citizen, or, uh, you know, any uh, a member of any of those countries who are considered uh, to be friends of Italy. So countries that have closer diplomatic ties with Italy. But if you are a citizen of a country which is not on this list, you may need a visa to um, even go for vacation to Italy. So if you are a citizen of one of those countries uh, that don't have a close diplomatic tie with Italy or friendly relationship with Italy, you may have to go through a visa approval process even to uh, visit Italy um, for one week or two weeks. But to clarify for our audience, uh, which uh, are basically people mostly from America or the UK, you don't need any Uh, visa to uh, go on vacation to Italy for up to 90 days so you can enjoy your property uh, for up to 90 days but if you wanted to stay for longer then it's necessary to apply for a visa and of course you can apply for any type of visa such as work visas or self-employment visas or um, student visas so there are several types of visas that you can apply for but probably the one that is the most famous is the retirement visa which is basically the visa that you can apply for without any specific purpose so for uh, the student visa you need to enroll in a school for the work visa you need to have an employer for the self-employment visa you have to start a business but the, the only visa that doesn't require any other specific purposes other than your willingness to relocate to italy is the retirement visa also known as the elective residency visa well owning a property does help you apply for that visa meaning that it's more likely for you to get the visa if you own a property and the consulate will be more inclined to accept a lower income because i should say that uh, the the only requirement basically for uh, this visa is, is that you are able to support yourself uh, during your time in italy it's a one Uh, your long visa and you have to show that you have the financial means to support yourself in Italy but if you own a property in Italy uh, let's say the consulate will normally be more inclined to accept a lower income uh, which still needs to be above the minimum required by the law 
but uh, your chances will increase if it's uh, above the minimum, but not that much above if you own a property, as opposed to um, having a property for rent in Italy, uh, which would be required if you didn't own a property. Uh, because the reason behind that is that uh, you know if you own a property you don't have to pay any rent you don't have to be worried about the the owner evicting you so it's a let's say a better situation for people who are interested in the elective residency visa but um, in conclusion and to answer your question owning a property doesn't automatically qualify you for any kind of Italian visas well, that's a very thorough answer, and so thank you so much for for clarifying that point because it's a, I know it's a it's something that a lot of people think of that they they have um, maybe a misunderstanding that owning property automatically allows for you to be there, but um, of course I'm sure it's something that doesn't hurt on the application. But just to move on to the next question from user Chew It uh, is all of Italy on DSL cable or fiber? Um, and are these high-speed connections common in Italy? Interesting. Um, I know you're quite the tech enthusiast, so I'm going to throw uh, this question back at you, so you, maybe you can answer <laughs> okay. uh, more thoroughly. Sure. Um, yeah, so when it comes to the topic of internet, generally speaking, um, cities and um, like uh, regional capitals and, or provincial capitals will have high speed internet. Uh, more and more are moving towards fiber. A lot of them have fiber to the cabinet rather than fiber to the house. Although um, in a place like Rovigo, for example, fiber to the house is becoming more and more common um, in the apartment buildings. It'll be fiber to the front door and then you have a probably a copper wire running through your building. Although there are some buildings that now are getting rewired. Um, so it depends greatly on where you are because you do still find some people not on dial up, but on satellite internet, some people who live a bit further out in the country. So it's not necessarily high speed internet, um, but not necessarily what you would find through a uh, old dial up connection. DSL you still can find, but I would say a good portion of Italy these days is on fiber uh, of some sort, um, whether that's to the cabinet or to the house is really, I would say, more of the question. If you're in a smaller town, then it's probably going to be more likely to be a DSL connection. But even some small cities, like I was saying, can be on fiber. And even um, recently, I saw an offer from Iliad that was absurdly priced if you already have a phone, a cell phone line with them and something like, I don't know, 15 euros, something much lower than the competition out there. This is not, of course, any type of sponsored content, but you can find um, really great internet for a very decent price. Um, uh, sometimes you can find like a package or it, at the very least just a home internet line maybe for say from 19 to 27 euros kind of in that range generally speaking it also of course depends on the um the time of year and what options are available because the offers from the companies in italy change rapidly so keep an eye out and compare and contrast and sometimes you can wait around and maybe find like a better offer during the summer or the winter but i think it might be worthwhile moving on there was a comment on the video that we did about the uh, nuda proprieta and the usufruto that we did uh, with your cousin andrea and in that video he was mentioning about that it would be potentially an interesting option for a child to purchase their parents' property in this way um, using that. But uh, what the question was from our good buddy, Gerald, can the parent put the child on the deed itself or let the child inherit it like through a will or something? Are, are there any benefits to using maybe a nuda proprieta or a usufruto over inheritance in this case? Well, the problem with transferring the property um, when it comes to inheritance is, is inheritance taxes, which in Italy are quite high. So if you can avoid a situation where the ownership is transferred uh, after the death of the individual, mm -hmm. you should. 
which is why uh, normally when it comes to purchasing a property for your uh, parent or maybe your parent is purchasing a property for themselves it's it's a good strategy to um, have you as the owner but as a nuda proprieta owner so you actually only own uh you, you own the property but you don't have the right to use the property which is reserved to your uh parent or parents so that um in the event of passing the property basically is already yours so there is no change of ownership and uh and you would avoid the um inheritance taxes which in italy are very high interesting so i I guess this is one of the reasons why you do end up finding these properties and why you do end up seeing this um this this aspect of the legal system being used very interesting there and just another um kind of general question not necessarily specifically from one person but kind of the culmination of a, of a number of uh, comments from the past can anybody get the codice fiscale uh to be able to go through this process of purchasing or renting in italy are there any restrictions yes. on who can get it oh, okay yes uh- <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> no, the answer is yes. Yes, that you can get it. Uh, you need to have a justified reason to uh, request it through the consulate. I know that consulates now, consulates of Italy uh, abroad are very picky and uh, very careful as to uh, who they release the tax code to. So mm-hmm. basically you have to explain why you need it. But of course, if you're renting in Italy or if you are purchasing in Italy, you do need it. So uh, okay. they will have to give it to you. But I know that we're questioning other reasons for people to uh, request it. But if you're purchasing or uh, renting, they will give it to you. And of course, as we um, said in other videos, there is also the possibility of requesting a tax code directly in Italy. It mm-hmm. wouldn't be probably the proper procedure because you can only do so if you reside in Italy and most people are not residing in Italy uh, in these situations because they're requesting the tax code to purchase or rent a property in order to go live in Italy. So, uh, But I've seen that most uh, revenue offices in Italy, which is where you go to request a college fiscale, we release them to people on the spot, even if they're not uh, residing in Italy. So uh, ultimately, the proper procedure for somebody who is a resident abroad would be to request it through the Italian consulate in their area and mm-hmm. justify why they need it. As for the procedure per se, uh, it's normally a quite easy process. You only have to download the forms um, the needed forms from the website of the consulate that you're using. Mm-hmm. And um, normally you can provide the forms, uh, scanned copies of the forms, you know, duly signed and, and filled out in full to the consulate via email. And normally the consulate replies fairly quickly, normally in, in a 10 days time frame, and, and issue a uh, tax, co- tax code, which is normally mailed to you of course uh, we said it in other videos you will get the tax code certificate which is a paper certificate mm-hmm. rather than the plastic card that is normally something that you can obtain only if you are a resident of italy but it's the same thing it's it's the mm-hmm. same tax code but in one case you have like a piece of paper reporting your tax code with a stamp and the signature of right. the consular official in the other case you have a plastic card which is um, easier to use and to carry around but it's the same yeah. thing yeah, I know like for for even regardless of whether you're an Italian citizen or not, if you're not living in Italy or not signed up with the healthcare services, um, at least it was at the time when I got mine that they were issuing the green card, the green Codice Fiscale card, whereas now for people who are residents in Italy and they've got healthcare and all of that, the Codice Fiscale is included on the blue medical card national and european health card so it's actually very convenient to be able to carry around that you just have your health insurance number is the same as your fiscal code number there's no differentiation between the two just as long as you're registered on the system Uh, but to move on to the final question for this episode from gucci black baby If you're an Italian citizen and living abroad as well as registered with the IRE, 
Are you eligible for the discount? This is in regards to tax breaks on your first home in Italy. Uh, going back to the question, I was told that Italian citizens who emigrated abroad, born in Italy, now living abroad, would be eligible for the discount. Is this true? It's true. So if you are, so let's take a step back, actually. Um, sure. You, when you purchase a property in Italy, um, you end up paying uh, the 2% on the value on paper of the property um, rather than the 9% if certain conditions apply. And by the way, this is called uh, Beneficio Prima Casa. So it's a benefit that the Italian government gives to people who are purchasing their for first home in Italy. So if you're purchasing your first home in Italy and you reside in Italy, then no problem. You pay the 2% on the value of paper of the property, but you have to move your residency uh, within 18 months into the property. So you cannot mm -hmm. reside in another property. You cannot reside uh, in another commune. So even if you have another property that you rent, you cannot be a resident there to use the uh, benefit for uh, people purchasing their first houses. Uh, so this applies to uh, Italian citizens residing in Italy, but also to foreign citizens residing in Italy with a residency permit. It also applies to those people who are not Italian citizens and who planned and who plan on moving the residency into the property uh, within 18 months from um, when the purchase is made. So say you are an American citizen purchasing a property in Italy and you intend on relocating to Italy, you can choose to pay the 2% on the condition that you relocate into the property within 18 months, which means in your specific case that you also have to obtain a residency permit, which also means that you f if you fail uh, to obtain one or if for whatever reason you don't relocate uh, into the property within 18 months, you will have to pay the difference in taxes so from the two percent you end up paying the nine percent but if you are an italian who live abroad and have no intention on relocating back to italy the italian government uh, extends the benefit to you basically the italian government is saying i understand that you are making your first purchase in Italy, but you don't want to live in Italy, but you are Italian. So I give you the ability to pay less taxes because you are an Italian residing abroad, uh, even if you don't move your residency into the property within 18 months. So it's a very um, intelligent thing that the Italian government did to um, facilitate the uh, purchase of properties by Italian citizens who reside abroad and of course we're talking about italian citizens who are registered with the aire so mm -hmm. who are formally residing abroad and this also applies to people who gain italian citizenship by descent and uh who register with the aire but uh, make no mistake you have to be an italian citizen at the time of the purchase so uh it doesn't work if you are in the process of becoming an italian citizen and uh, you are not yet an Italian citizen when you make the purchase. Wow. Well, that is great that it is possible for even these individuals who don't have the intention to full, fully live in Italy and uh, or that they're wanting to get this uh, benefit, that it is a possibility. But we've actually gone through all of the questions that we wanted to include in this episode but of course marco if anybody is needing help with the purchasing process or even maintenance process the upkeep process in italy for their property or their future property how can they get in contact with you and your team people can contact us through our website italianrealestatelawyers.com or Give us a call. The number is on the website. 
Of course, that is fantastic. And if you are interested in more content like this, be sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel or the audio only podcast. But of course, if you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you also have the benefit of being automatically subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast as well, where we talk a bit more about topics like some of what we got into today about how you can legally stay in Italy, how you can become a citizen of Italy, whether that's by descent or through residency, whatever it may be. Uh, and of course, uh, if you're interested in more content about life abroad, living abroad, living abroad as an Italian dual citizen expat be sure to come over to my youtube channel youtube.com slash rafael di furia or you can also find it through a quick google search for not your average globetrotter or you can also find it on your favorite podcasting player of choice through not your average globetrotter of course but marco permunian thank you so much again for making yourself available for this episode of the italian real estate podcast presented by italian real estate lawyers.com of course i am rafael di furia stay safe and healthy out there and we will see you all next time later thank you